Hi everybody, I'm uh, Mike Doody from the Mersey Rivers Trust and um, with the help of the Wild Trout Trust and various other people I've been running um, river fly sampling in Greater Manchester since 2010. Um, originally through the Salford Friendly Angler Society, our local, one of our local fishing clubs and more recently through the Mersey Rivers Trust and over recent years with the development of the Rivers Trust, we've been able to engage with lots more volunteers. Um, and in, two, in January, two, sorry, there's always a story with me. You can, we never get straight away. In January 2018, um, I was invited by one of our local experts, um, Dr. Malcolm Greenhouse, into Manchester Museum, into the entomology department to talk to them about the work that we've been doing um, over the last few years in collecting samples and looking at ways that we might work with Manchester University Museum to collect a new set of data for Greater Manchester's rivers as they've been improving over the last few years because they don't actually have a set of local samples of river fly from their own rivers. So Malcolm was busy trying to push me into one direction and I was saying, well, actually we've got great volunteers who know what they're doing, doing X, and we don't want them to do Y and Z as well because it will confuse the issue. Um, Malcolm was a little bit upset and then eventually so Malcolm threw a, an academic paper at me um, and said um, you might be interested in this then and it was a report that says there the biological changes in the freshwater of the Mersey Basin and it was written in 1995-96 and it records um, biological data firstly in 1970 and then compares it again in 1994. And the bit that I was particularly interested in was the entomology side of it, where they record um, Acellus, hog lice, um, gammarous freshwater shrimp, ephemeropter, fish, and Betis nymphs. And the results were, as we expected in, in, that, in those days, they weren't particularly, well, in 1970 they were atrocious. In 1994 they weren't particularly good. Um, the penny dropped in my head that we're in 2018 and there was a 24 year cycle. Um, and that we could have a, a great citizen science project in 2018 to repeat the, pro the, um, repeat the project that had been completed in 1970 and 1994. So again, the biology of the, most of the Mersey rivers, and there's 23 of them, only began to be recorded in any detail um, in the latter half of the 20th century and then to a very, only to a very limited extent. Um, I'm teaching you to suck eggs. Intensive urban development um, means that there's very few natural features within most of the Mersey rivers. Um, uniform channels, um, poor water quality. Um, in the early 1970s, the River Mersey was widely regarded as an area devoid of fish. Um, futile attempts were made at various times in the 1970s to introduce fish into several stretches of the river, but organic pollution and chemical loading were always too great for fish survival. And it ended up I'll jump the gun again. In 19, early 19, late 1980s, early 1990s, the EAC built a fish farm at Leyland specifically to, to, uh, to restock Mersey Rivers. Um, so we'll skip that slide as we've already got there. So here's my Christmas party piece, the 23 rivers of the Mersey catchment. I can go around the clock and, uh, and name them blindfolded now. Uh, I couldn't used to. Um, and we can see here that River 12 and probably just about here, if Warren will correct me, is Staley Bridge. Um, and the Mersey is, is, is being split into five sub catchments through Cabba. Um, we've got Alton Crossings, well, four actually. We've got Douglas up there, which is part of the Ribble, but we've, we've done work up there in the past and I still maintain a little interest. We've got Alton Crossings, Lower Mersey, Weaver Gowie, Upper Mersey. And oh well. So it's quite a huge area and there's about four and a half million people living it. So in 2018 we took out our Riverfly volunteers around all 23 rivers of the Mersey catchment and tested for the same tests, biological tests that have been conducted in 1970 and 1994 to see how far our rivers had improved. And we knew that our rivers were improving because our citizen scientists, when they're regularly out, in the field, having what I call Eureka moments. They don't go, Eureka, I've realised I'm not doing that anymore, Duddy's an idiot. Um, that's a, the Eureka moments when they find new species that have never been, have never been previously recorded there. 
And we get those on a really frequent basis. So we've even had them in the last, your, what we call it, about your Eureka moments in the last couple of weeks, when fish were found on Moston Brook in the centre of Manchester for the first time in living memory. Um, so the first thing that was tested in 1970 was a cellus, um, commonly known as water louse or hog louse, a great indicator of uh, a healthy level of sewage loading. Not what you want when you open water swimming, to be swimming around in a river full of azellus. And you can see that in 1970, the main river Irwell, the main river of Mersey, and many of the tributaries were actually too polluted for azellus to survive in. And then in 1994, we've got the comeback of the azellus, which is great news when you have none. So anything's a step in the right direction. And then in 2018, we can actually see that azellus are all over the Mersey catchment, but water quality is improving to the extent, and there's probably a pointer in there, but um, to the extent that in the headwaters of some of the clean rivers, um, azellus is retreating, so that it's not found, which is really good news. Matt, you can't explain that uh, it's either presence or non-presence. You're right. And I'm a terrible which man. Which is black, which is... You're, you're right. So the, the, uh, the criteria that we undertook to actually look at um, species identification. So where, where, there's, where we found the species, it's obviously in black, where it's absent is in white. Um, we sampled with volunteers, um, mainly in places where it's accessible for volunteers to get in the river, but strategically we tried to sample every, every kilometre, every kilometre and a half on those rivers with volunteers. We went out with 237 volunteers over two and a half months in summer 2018. Um, Betis, back in 1970, again, they can survive quite a tolerable, tolerable loading of uh, organic pollution. Plentiful in the River Weaver, in the River Bolin, in the River Dean, in the River Ethro, top end of the Tame, um, the, the Bolton Rivers, top end of the Irwell, but mostly absent. 1994, still mostly absent because the water quality was still pretty shockingly poor and in 2018 there's only one stream of the river of the uh, Mersey Basin which is that one Ditton Brook which is in most in most cases is actually tied is tied up for quite a long way um, the basis has uh, made a pretty pretty strong recovery ephemeroptera um, and in this it included blue ringed yellow stoneflies, stone clingers, well I didn't include stoneflies, so blue ringed yellow stone clingers and mayfly, virtually non-existent in 1970, just at the very headwaters. Again, 1994, not much movement downstream through the system, but in 2018, pretty much everywhere, and there's really significant improvements in water quality. And that's again reflected in the gamorous population, which if we're in the south of England on a chalk stream, um, Sean will be delighted to see huge numbers of gamorous. Uh, we tend to find in the Mersey system that they're not the best indicator of water, good water quality. As you can see in 1994, well, gamorous will live where betis and other, other insects won't. So 2018, gamorous are pretty much everywhere and they'll tolerate a little bit of salt water as well. Um, and then my favourite being a fisherman is the fish population. In 1970, there were very few rivers in the Mersey system that were considered to be good fisheries. It was obviously the River Dane and the River Weaver and the River Bolin and the, again the clean rivers of Wolf Bolton. But the Irwell, the Mersey, the Tame, the River Glaze, the River Gowie, um, pretty much fish-free zones. And I know that Sean in will find the River Goit here in the mid 1980s did some sampling on the river going and walked for how many kilometers without finding a living thing so uh, there was a, there was a 400 meter ridge below the chemical works that was utterly devoid of life yeah. not even a diatom and it's amazing we've got salmon breeding there now yeah. so times are changing so again 1994 the environment agencies had started a program of fisheries restocking um, but there were still large areas of the Mersey system that didn't have any, any significant fish life. 2018, it's absolutely everywhere. So in all of the main, all of the main river sections of the Mersey system, 
with this uh, fish life. There are still streams that are devoid of fish, non main river, um, but constantly as our citizen scientists are out checking and monitoring and doing their work, we're coming across new species, species of fish. Not new, we're not discovering new world or new Mersey species. We're discovering fish <laughs> that they've never been before. That's a better description of it. So it's a great project, and um, obviously there were limitations to the project. It only recorded presence and absence. Um, it didn't identify, we didn't break it down into subspecies of mayfly, such as blue winged olive, stone clinger, um, true mayfly, and it didn't record the presence and absence of stonefly, which we tend to find is the best indicator of clean water. Um, the picture and the survey was based on 1970s aspirations. Um, and it's great that we've met them, but we know that a, it, the, the maps tend to show that the job's done because all of these species have, have reappeared. But we know there's lots more to do. Um, and, but under 1970s standards, we sort of like, we've come a long way. And it's interesting, and it's good to be able to record that and show that. So it's been difficult for us. We've, we've, we've done this project with a large number of citizen scientists and volunteers. But we haven't publicised the results too far because we don't want people to get the wrong impression. Uh, the, the, job's, the job's finished, we don't need to do anything. <coughs> there is nothing more to do. So we're being quite careful about how we've presented the data to the general public. But um, how we're going to take it forward is we're going to create a little film probably um, in the early part of 2020 and actually include the data and say it's great we've come this far, but there's this more to do so just to keep the, the ball rolling. Again, future ambition we're going to create a map to show the upstream limits of migratory fish in each of the rivers of the Mersey system, uh, maps to show presence and absence of stonefly, blue winged olive and heptogenids, and to um, look at increasing key numbers of uh, key indicators of vertebrate species. So that's the end of it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Good. Thank you.